Welcome to the Ultimate Reloader Ranch. It's an absolute winter wonderland. It's zero degrees Fahrenheit, but that's not gonna stop us from doing an awesome Cerakote shop tour. Gavin, you here from ultimatereloader.com. I've been working on my Cerakote booth for a while now. I've got a great setup. My goal was to put together a professional bin bar setup. That's right. A setup where you can do Cerakote work without major compromises, but without breaking the bank and without taking up too much space. It's really cold out here. So let's go inside and I'm gonna show you all around. Okay, so I'm gonna guide you all through the process from air to prep to painting to oven. Okay, so this is the air compressor station. And what we've got here is an 80 gallon compressor. This is not a high budget compressor. It works good, it's got good CFM, but it's really loud and it does the job. So this is from Industrial Air. Again, 80 gallons, 175 PSI max. We've got 17.9 CFM at 100 and 17 CFM at 175. It's got a five horsepower motor. This baby gets the job done. And my main concern was sandblasting because when you're sandblasting, you're using a high volume of air, lots of CFM. And I wanted to make sure that I had a compressor that was gonna keep up with this. So we come out of the compressor, we go through a pre-filter. I've got a primary regulator back here. And then we go into the air dryer. So I looked at a bunch of different solutions, including the Harbor Freight dryer. Now, a lot of guys have had good results with the Harbor Freight unit but I wanted to step up in quality and go up to this Quincy unit. This is made in Italy. It's got really good reviews and so far it's worked really well. Now, one of the usability concerns that I had was being able to turn all of this on and off for filming or when I come into the shop and start working. So next we're gonna go over to the power station and look at all, how all those controls are implemented. Okay, so here we are. In the main shop area, you can walk right in the door over to our utility sink here. We've got kind of a breaker style main power switch for the compressor. And I've got my air ball valve here. So we're using max line three quarter inch throughout the entire shop. And what's great about max line is it's really easy to work with. You can cut it to length with the included lopper tool. There's a chamfer tool the fittings use compression and O-rings. It's mesh reinforced, really good stuff, and it does not cost a lot of money. So, max line, really good. You can switch on the compressor, the air, and then the air dryer right here. Now we're good to go. Let's go back to the sandblasting station and look at how we do prep here. Okay, so here we have the Scat Blast. This is the 960 DLX. It's got 46 inches by 28 by 28 working envelope. And I did a couple upgrades to this machine. I put in LED lighting, which is just screwing in flood lamps. Very, very easy. Just got those at Home Depot. And then I also put in a metering valve. And if you guys take a look at the article, I'll have all of this equipment, all of the parts, pieces, and supplies spelled out in detail with product links. Cerakote themselves uh, offers a lot of the stuff that you're gonna need, a lot of the really hard to find specialty items, which is really, really good. So you'll see a lot of those links. Okay, so this cost a little over $2,000, which is a bit of an investment. And, and typically the two big options I saw in some of the Facebook groups that I'm in were the Harbor Freight unit, with a ton of upgrades and sometimes, you know, a way to put a barrel out the side, that kind of thing. And then the Scat Blast was another really popular option. And again, I wanted a machine that was gonna be quality, that was gonna last 10 years, and something that I could be really productive with and enjoy using. And this machine definitely is that. What I like about it is it has the dust collection uh, that comes as a part of this setup. Uh, oh, one other big upgrade that I did was I welded up this tray and I put uh, caster wheels on it so that I can move the entire unit around. Uh, I haven't needed to move it around yet, but it's uh, definitely a really nice capability. 
So let's fire this baby up. I've got regulated air right here. I've got another uh, filter and oh yeah, we're already on there. So that's good. We're gonna flip on the power. We're gonna put a part in there. As you guys see in there, one latch over here, which is really nice. We've got our integrated gloves here. And we're just gonna stomp on the pedal and start blasting. That's about all there is to it. We've got a barrel rack in there for supporting rifle barrels. When we're done, we can grab our part out. I wouldn't handle it with my bare hands if I was gonna Cerakote it. And we can very conveniently adjust pressure here with this pressure regulator. If we're gonna be blasting polymer PMAGs or Glock pistol frames, we're gonna be more like at 45 PSI. If I'm doing stainless steel barrels or similar metal parts, we're typically gonna be at about 90. So this gives us that capability. Oddly, this is really fun, sandblasting. So when I have friends or family members come into the shop, I typically fire this machine up and I have them sandblast something. Lots of visual satisfaction, really good stuff. And you can see here our max line is continuing throughout the shop. Let's step into the booth here real quick. So the booth is not very big. We're at about eight by 10. That is not a lot of square footage. And what I had in mind was pre-filtered air up here and the ability to close both of these patio sliders to seal off the entire booth in terms of airflow. So when I start up my exhaust system and if we shut the doors, all of the air is gonna come through those pre-filters and we're gonna ensure that we don't have excessive dust coming into this area. So this here plenum box for these filters was a DIY project. I wanted to avoid DIY specifically where I could with this booth because time is money. I'd rather be Cerakoting rifles and building great content and doing less DIY ovens or DIY exhaust systems. A lot of people will tell you something like, and this is novice people online, oh, a bathroom fan is fine. I don't think so. This fan here, which I will link to in the article, is from Amazon. It's explosion proof. Very important detail because we've got flammable fumes being expelled from the room. We don't want sparks and explosions. Very, very bad thing. Uh, this is 2,400 cubic feet per minute and it's right where I wanna be. It's not excessive airflow drawing up dust from the floor, but I don't wanna really smell the fumes while I'm painting, while I'm applying Cerakote, excuse me, I'm not painting, I'm Cerakoting, right? So just to show you what this looks like, I built the plywood box, I attached it to the wall. We've got the outlet for the fan right here, and then I also built three quarter inch plywood frame uh, elements here for the filters to pop onto. So this is just a, kind of a low budget but completely adequate way to get this built. And you know the off the shelf systems that I was looking at were thousands of dollars. This fan, a couple hundred bucks, something like that, and this cost you know under a hundred dollars. So at some point I thought that'd be kind of cool to offer this as a kit, a flat pack kind of like Ikea plywood, you just screw it together, you bolt on your fan, you know, and you're good to go. These, by the way, are 20 inch by 20 inch filters, the same ones I'm using for the pre-filters. And when they get clogged up enough, I just put additional ones in, not a problem at all. Another thing in this area is we've got our test palette here. This is just a piece of paper on some cardboard. I will probably get more ornate, but what I've noticed is when I start this up, it kind of holds itself in place right on the filter board. Just like that. 
Because this holds itself in place, I don't need a separate support or easel or tripod in the room, which would just take up additional space. And all the overspray goes into the filters there. <laughs> so that's just another little space saving uh, element. Okay, let's talk about air. So again, I've got MaxLine. MaxLine comes over here to the paint shaker. And you can see I've got the Harbor Freight paint shaker. I know, Harbor Freight, I was a little bit reticent, but when I learned that the folks at Cerakote use it at their facility, and I've seen other pro shops use it, I thought, why not? It's not very expensive. Now, the thing with reciprocating tools like this is their job is to shake. And I didn't want my wall shaking and, and making a bunch of noise in here. I didn't want my bench shaking. So I drilled right into the concrete and mounted it to the floor and it fits right under this plenum box. So again, kind of a, a space saving, space efficient thing. The other max line, three quarter inch line comes down over here. So I've got a ball valve here where I can shut off air to the paint guns and to the, that full pressure air blowing outlet here. We've got quick detach, uh, quick attach tooling on all of those. And then I've got two different regulators for two different guns. The guns I laser engraved, one and two, and I've got slots here for one and two, and then I also have some color coding here with red on the end of both of the number ones, so this should be the other way around if I'm going to really follow my system, and so that I can tell when I'm adjusting number one, I'm down here with this gun, right? So I can basically take the air... I can go ahead and do my test pattern. I've got a wall chart on the other side that has my reference for one turn out on the fan and, and two turns out on the fluid. And then we adjust the air screw. Air screw is something that I've experimented with a little bit. It's really easy to hit this with your pinky, uh, especially if you have larger hands, and inadvertently adjust the air, which you don't want. So each time I do a coat of Cerakote, I do a confirmation on the test board just to make sure that everything is still where it needs to be. And I'm, I've got some other ideas about how to do this a little bit more formally with an add-on bit that I'd like to make there. These wall rack pieces here are just, I think this is two inch uh, couplers for PVC conduit for electrical. And I just cut a slot in it and then I screwed them to the wall. I did countersink those. And these guns fit in there real nice which is is kind of cool okay so that's the air setup it's a bit of work there's actually a fair bit of expense here just in all of the npt pipe pieces and the adapters i've got another trap here we've got a ball valve uh and you kind of assemble it i assembled it from this direction over everything worked out great however and it's really easy to just you know if i want to put something else here you know i can do that kind of at any moment and it doesn't leak. Okay, so if you don't want your air plumbing to leak, here's what I learned from a plumber. You wanna use really good pipe dope, which is like a Teflon paste or similar. I use super blue for that. And then you wanna use the really good Teflon tape. I use tape products like Mega Tape, either the blue or the gray, which is a lot thicker than that wimpy white stuff that you get. If you use the dope and the tape together, it's not gonna leak. This can stay, if I close this ball valve, the pressure here will stay for like a week. So that makes me really, really happy. Okay, let's make our way over here to the bench area. These are gun stands that I made. Cerakote sells these. They sell nicer ones that are, you know, billet aluminum. Uh, the way these work is, I'm going to grab the guns. We just put this little peg here into the air coupler and they stand upright. And what's nice about this is that we can disassemble the gun. Uh, you know, we could take out the needle and then also when we are pouring paint, paint, it's not paint, it's Cerakote, right? <laughs> into the guns, we use a screen like so, and then we're gonna take and pour like this. And it frees up hands and it's just a, a nice way to 
work with your guns so that you can do multiple things. I might be cleaning this off with some acetone or, or something like that and have everything where it needs to be. And again, because I'm thinking space efficiency for everything, I've got these, these screws on the wall to hang them from, so I'm only, I've only got these on the bench when I absolutely need them. So over on this side, the bench top is my working area. I can lay out a rifle here. I can bring in a rifle rack. I've got a little stand for my phone here so that when I'm using the Cerakote app to get my proper mix ratio, I can do all of that and have it right there where I need it, but far enough away to not get splatter on your phone. I, I do want to get a tablet in here and, and do what they do at Cerakote and get it hooked up to music and stuff and then have the Cerakote mixing app on that as well. Life goals, not for now, for a little bit later. <laughs> We've got all of our Cerakote here. I've got Catalyst. I've got some other kinds of Cerakote over here like Micro Slick that I'm looking forward to uh, experimenting with. That's gonna be uh, pretty fun. We've got Waste Cans. So when we're cleaning, we'll just op pop the top on one of these and th the excess ac acetone and all the uh, Cerakote residue goes into those. We pour any unused Cerakote in there and then uh, I'll probably let those dry out and then take the solids and dispose of that uh, appropriately. Uh, down here, we've got other kinds of painting things. If I'm gonna do some rattle can painting in the winter, right now it's really nice to use this setup. We've even painted steel targets in here. We've done kind of a little bit of, of everything. Okay, so some other things. We've got a timer. These are pretty cool timers. They sell these at Cerakote and they're magnetic on the back. So I've got one in my oven I'll show you in a moment. I use this for like flash time or for uh, the time between coats. So I'll put five minutes on here, very loud beep when it's done. You won't miss it anywhere in the shop. I've got technical data sheets and instructions here from Cerakote that I like to keep on hand. I've got my thickness gauge. So this is an instrument, and this it hasn't been used yet, but I'll be showing this in future videos. They sell this at Cerakote, again, and this is a sensor that can read through the Cerakote and tell you what the thickness is going to be. Now, depending on what you're spraying and what product it is, uh, you're going to want to be somewhere between probably a half thousandth of an inch and one thousandth of an inch total coating on on each side of whatever it is that you're applying Cerakote to. I went a step further when I was working in my barrel spraying uh, patterns and the number of coats and all that. I did a micrometer reading on this barrel to get the diameter before and after. And I worked on my application and got it just where I need to be to be at that perfect mill thickness coating. I've also got a bunch of racking hangers here. So we've got wire of various types. Cerakote sells these, these hangers for, for different things, whether it be an AR-15 upper or lower or other parts. And you're gonna use a ton of these. So I just ordered the complete sets of those. And again, with the goal of space efficiency, I used part of a food service, you know, rolling cart type rack system. I took one of the shelves here, and this is really great for racking, right? Racking would be staging the parts before the Cerakote is applied, and then uh, as they're either flashing or waiting between coats, we rack them over here to uh, make sure that we've got them where they won't get bumped into and where they can just hang and do what, whatever needs to be done there. Okay, so we've got other parts and pieces. We've got some protective gear. I've got mixing cups. Uh, we've got, of course, gloves, which we're going to need. This is the Harbor Freight magnetic glove rack that I just screwed to the wall. Uh, tape is definitely a really important thing. And, and any, with anything that you're doing with Cerakote, you need to think about heat resistance because if it's going to go into the oven, it needs to be specialty tape like this. Or for your vinyl cutter, it needs to be high temperature vinyl, which Cerakote sells on their website as well. You don't want it to get into the oven and melt or get compromised or leave nasty residue on your Cerakote. Say you're doing a multi-cam camouflage pattern, something like that. So I use the high temp tape 
it's really good for masking different lines and transitions. The stuff works really good and, and the adhesive is really, really powerful. Uh, this is the acetone tank that Cerakote sells on their website. It's a little bit spendy, but it's well worth it. It's got a gasket on the inside so that you don't lose excessive acetone through evaporation. And what I like about this is we've got this basket and when I'm doing a barreled action, for instance, I can just lay the barrel or barreled action in here, a muzzle brake, whatever parts I need to clean. And then we just gently lower it down into the acetone. And this helps avoid splashing. You don't want to get acetone on your hands. Anytime I'm handling acetone, I use gloves. And then when we're done, we just lift the basket, let it drip dry. Then we can run it over compressed air to dry the parts off and remove any of that acetone. So this is, this is definitely a must have if you're doing longer parts like rifles. Uh, some folks use Simple Green. I have not done that personally. Uh, I like to use acetone because I know it's super, super strong. Okay, let's go to the oven section. Okay, this is another one of those really important elements that I didn't want to do a compromised implementation on. A lot of people do DIY ovens with things like smokers and all that. And if you have the time to do that, and if you like to do DIY projects, that's great. I enjoy DIY, but I did not have time for it. And I wanted the features of a real industrial oven. So I turned to Light Armor. Light Armor has the best deal going for an oven that is up to commercial quality, but isn't gonna be $5,000 or thereabouts. This is the LA2500B. I have the circulation fan, and if you use our Ultimate Reloader code, Oven125, you get $125 off your Cerakote oven purchase, as long as it's got the circulating fan, which you want for Cerakote. <laughs> so this guy is, is really great. We flip it on, we set the temperature, and we can set a timer, which is really handy if you want to set it for a couple hours at 250, which would be a typical H-series Cerakote curing schedule. Uh, you can leave your shop. It'll turn itself off. And the next morning, you've got parts that are, you know, ready to roll. And you can hear the, the circulating fan if we open this guy up. Here we've got the racking here so that we can hang all of our parts. We've got Plenty of height here. This is a five foot unit. Plenty of room for barreled actions, for chassis systems, for whatever it is that, that I need to do. Okay, so that's kind of a guided tour of the Ultimate Reloader Cerakote shop. I'm really happy with how things turned out. I just added to the lighting that you just saw in the booth. You really need to be able to see what you're applying product to if you want a really good paint job or Cerakote job correspondingly, or even finishes for wood for that matter. And so lighting is critical. Uh, you don't have to go overboard. I used standard LED shop lights, but I made sure that they were oriented correctly. And the blaster works great, the booth works great, and this oven works great. It's really important if you wanna do top quality jobs and if you wanna make money with Cerakote, that you have a professional solution. And that does not mean a whole lot of space. The eight by 10 that you saw here is plenty of space to do great Cerakote work up to a pretty good level of production as well. So you don't need to spend $100,000 and you don't need a huge 3,000 square foot facility for Cerakote. You can do it with a lot less. Now what might happen is if we start doing Cerakote in bulk for the public will definitely move up to a bigger facility and do more things but i would probably keep this as a personal shop because i really enjoy having the space to do these kinds of projects and you're going to want to check out some of the projects that we've done i gave a quick overview of the cerakote training i would highly recommend if you're serious about cerakote that you get on the list and that you go to do the training these are the people that understand their product the best and they have a super professional staff that will quickly equip you for success and Cerakote can be very, very lucrative. It's a really good business to think about getting into. 
And what I've done, I've done an AR-15 project at Cerakote. I've done multiple barreled actions, and we've gotten really detailed about how to mask things off and how to do uh, bolt-action receivers and things like that. And we've got a lot more cool projects coming. So thank you for watching this shop tour. I'm glad I could show you around and show you what we've done. And again, the article will be an invaluable source of information if you want to put together a shop like this. So check out the list, sign up for the Cerakote training, make sure you take advantage of the Light Armor Oven 125 discount code if you want an affordable professional commercial oven. This is really good stuff and I'm lo really looking forward to the continuing projects we're gonna be showing, including a 50 BMG rifle build coming up very shortly. We've got uh, a full Glock customization and Cerakote job, just too many cool things even to mention. Here's what I wanna know from you is what did you think of my Cerakote shop? What do you think of the projects that I've done and the different components and DIY projects that I've put together for this? Please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're going to want to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.